The Bulls have an opportunity to get back in the win column today against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Will they? All signs with the Bulls' current play points to that being doubtful, but we're going to talk about what the Bulls can do to get back on the right track against the Timberwolves. Plus, it's Sunday, so you know we got to dive into the mailbag. All that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central. I'm the host here, Hayes, as many of you should know by now. But nonetheless, with that being said, the Bulls face the Minnesota Timberwolves today. And so you guys know I'm I'm off of at this point in time with my frustration with this team predicting wins, losses, whatever for the Chicago Bulls. I just need to see this team compete and compete with some heart. That's what it really boils down to with this team. So often they, they do not play with the heart necessary, looking like they have the desire to pull themselves out of this rut that they're currently in. And that's what we need to see from the Bulls, a sense of urgency. This Bulls team says a lot of the right things. After every single game, after every single losing streak, after every, they always say the correct things. But we don't always see that translate to the court for the Chicago Bulls. And that's what's, I think, frustrating Chicago Bulls fans the most, is the fact that you have to question the desire of this team to pull themselves out of this rut that they're currently in. And with questioning that desire, it just... It makes you not feel as good about this team. If we had a scrappy team that was competing hard and just not able to close out games, I think the feeling around this team would be different. We'd still be frustrated at losses, but it's the fact that in the losses and in a lot of the losses that the Bulls had at this part in the season, it's really just come from lack of execution, lack of seeming like they understand the sense of urgency needed with a team that's currently under 500 as much as they are this far into the season. Now, there's still more than enough season left to turn the season around. But again, that's asking a tall or order from a team that is competing with no heart. If this team was competing for heart, that mindset of, hey, we can be the team that turns it around in the second half would be easier to believe and hold on to because we'd be seeing this team compete with some level of heart and desire. And we're not seeing that with this team as of right now in the current or in the current spot that this team is in. And you, like I said, there are going to be some Bulls fans that blame everything on Zach. Some Bulls fans that still blame Vooch. Some Bulls fans that blame everything on Billy Donovan. Some Bulls fans that, and it's not, it's a combination of all those things. And as much as some Bulls fans will have you believe that Lonzo Ball alone would fix all this, guess what? Lonzo isn't coming through that door anytime soon, at least by the way that things look. You don't have a clear timeline on that. So this Bulls team has to understand that the fix is not coming from, from externally, at least it doesn't seem like it is right now, unless the front office decides to go ahead and pull the trigger on a on a deal to bring in some different talent and try to move some things around with this team. Some Bulls fans have also said and asked for, is it is it what does it have to do? You have to stagger Zach and DeMar. Do you have to do, play a little bit different brand of offense? All those things are valid questions and questions that hopefully we get the answers to and sees that this team is also asking those questions. But until we see it, it's hard to have faith in that. So looking at this Bulls team tonight, as they face the Minnesota Timberwolves, what do we have? Well, A, Io and Javante are listed as probable. That probably means that they're more than likely to play than not to play. So shout out to them. I do think that they're going to compete in this game. Now on the other side of the ball, we know Carl Anthony Towns is out. Gobert and Russell are both listed as questionable right now, considering they, the Minnesota Timberwolves, rightfully so, if they do look at the Bulls like, oh, we're just facing the Bulls tonight, may still sit Gobert and Russell because Hey, they're facing the Chicago Bulls, the Chicago Bulls team that's completely underperformed and not really looked dangerous in most of their games this season. So we could see that. Again, uh, uh, right now, Rudy Gobert is leading the league in rebounding. Uh, we know that we have Vooch and Andre Drummond, a really good one-two punch tandem, at least on paper. They started off the season looking that way rebounding-wise, but we really haven't seen them really look like that type of, of, of a rebounding tandem in a minute. It's been quite a while since we've really seen them look formidable and getting both those double digit assists together. So with that being said, like this team has to rebound the ball well. Outside of the defense, we know, I think that goes without saying, right? So in anything that I talk about the Bulls, let's just assume right off the top that one of my biggest keys to that is the Bulls need to play solid defense throughout the goddamn game. That's just, that's what this team needs to do. Now on top of that, we do need to see, let's limit down the turnovers. Let's not have the, the if we can get Below double-digit turnovers would be excellent. But if we can keep the turnovers around 10 to 12, I think that's usually a good sign. While the assists are still going up for the Chicago Bulls, I think that's a good sign for this team. But we need to limit those turnovers. We need to limit those boneheaded shots as well in, in key moments for the Chicago Bulls. 
Now, the Chicago Bulls offensively don't rate too bad. That's why I always kind of more so focus on defense. They're middle of the pack team offensively. They're the 15th uh, team as far as points per game in the in the NBA. Um, and I think they're the 17th defensive team as far as uh, points allowed. Now, we know that uh, their point differential, or sorry their, sorry, their defensive rating, I think they're still in the top 10 right now. But outside of that, we need to see the effort in all four quarters. I've said it before. Even if it takes some away from the third and fourth quarters, if this team can play a more consistent brand of defense, these games look extremely different for, for, for the Chicago Bulls. We need to see Zach Levine have an impact in a game, especially in the game against the Minnesota Timberwolves, where Anthony Edwards is about to try to cook everybody you put on. And he, has, he definitely has the ability to do so. Anthony Edwards not kind of not made the leap that some people thought that he would make in his second season, but at the end of the day, um, it, it, he's still balling, right? Or is it his third? It's Anthony Edwards' third season, right? And correct me if I'm wrong on that one. I, I, I listen. I get so thrown off when it comes to these other teams and and how many years they've been playing because I'm a Bulls fan and I'm a Bulls fan first and foremost, more so than an NBA fan. And it's been killing me to see my team play in the manner in which they have been. It's been absolutely killing me. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It's been killing me. But yeah, Anthony Edwards has not made the leap in his third season that some people have thought that he would make, but let's not let's not make no mistakes about that. He's still 23rd in the league in scoring. He's 66 in reboundings as a guard, right? That's crazy. He's still shooting the ball 45% overall from the field. That's the type of impact that Anthony Edwards has on this team. And while he's only shooting the ball 36% from three-point range, don't let that overlook you. With the way that the Bulls allow three-point shooters to get hot, Anthony Edwards can go on a tear from three-point range. The Bulls are going to have to lock in defensively. The Bulls are going to have to, at some point, figure out their identity. Is their identity? Listen, it's, it's this, period, point blank. This is, this is, I'm, C-Dub, I'm stealing this from you. He said this over on Chicago Bears Central, but I'm going to bring it over here. We are going to know collectively as a team if this team is a bunch of bitches or do they have some type of resolve? He said geniuses and jack asses, but I'm just taking it this way. This Chicago Bulls team has to get their fucking shit in gear, and I apologize for cursing. But that's how I feel about this team. And if they can do so, again, as I said before, when, if, even if they do get a win tonight against the Minnesota Timberwolves, okay, you got one win. Can you get three of them? Can you get four of them? Can you win five out of seven? Can you win seven out of ten? Can you win ten out of 13 or ten out of 15? Hell, we'll take that at this point. The Bulls around this time last season went on a nine-game winning streak. Can the Bulls do something similar now to save their season? I don't have high hopes for it, but it's all going to be proven on the court tonight if the Bulls can at least take a step in that direction against the Minnesota Timberwolves. But like I said, even if they do win tonight, all right, you got to show me more than that. And I think that's where many Bulls fans sit right now when it comes to this team. Now, moving off the preview for tonight's game, there are three things that I've kind of rested on with this Bulls team that I that I want to see more from this team as the season continues, especially if this team can't win. I definitely need to see these things more, more than not. P. Will needs more shots. Period, point blank. The whole time of, yes, part of it's his aggression level and things like that, but at the end of the day, this coaching staff needs to work into the offense. Patrick Williams getting 12 to 14 shots a game. Period. I don't want to hear nothing about, oh, but he this, he, I don't give two shits because giving DeMar as many shots as he have, giving Zach as many shots as he's gotten, hasn't gotten the Bulls any goddamn where. Patrick Williams needs more shots. And to a bigger extent, or a lesser extent of that, Io needs more opportunities to actually run some offense as well. I know he's not a true point guard. He's more of a combo guard. But Io DeSumo also needs opportunities to grow his skill set. That's what I want to see. Second thing on this list. The running the offense through DeMar DeRozan as a whole needs to stop. If you want to do it in fourth quarters of tight games when do you know DeMar can get to cooking, fine. But the, the running just the offense, the base level offense through DeMar DeRozan, it's the, the sheep has sailed on that. The NBA has figured that out. It's over with. Stop it. De, uh, Billy Donovan, are you a genius or a jackass? We're leaning towards jackass here on Chicago Bull Central, but can't you get out of your, your dumbass jackassness and, 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 and change your offense when you notice it's not working? Running the ball through DeMar DeRozan needs to stop. Period. And then the last thing, it's time to change something on this team. I'm not necessarily saying that needs to come through a trade. I'm not necessarily saying that needs to come through benching DeMar. I'm not necessarily saying that needs to not playing Zach and DeMar so many minutes together, but something on this team, playing inside out through Vooch as well. I talked about playing more through Patrick Williams. Vooch needs some opportunities for things to go through him as well. The running the offense through DeMar DeRose and the NBA has figured it out. If we as fans have figured it out, guess what coaches, especially strategists, have figured out in the NBA? 
And God forbid, if the Bulls were to luck themselves into the play- let's just say the Bulls did turn the season around and it got into the playoffs, they're going to lose every playoff series they're in because especially when you have a, uh, if, if, it's, if it's a coach, half, half, halfway worth his salt, he's going to figure it out. With the NBA has figured out how to stop a DeMar DeRozan-based offense. Unless you're going to bring in Pop here to give you pointers on what to do, unless you're going to bring in Eric Spolstra in here to get – we don't have the coach that can have a limited offense but still make the correct adjustments. We just don't have that in Billy Donovan. Is everything on Billy Donovan? No, but part of it is. And the, the time to change something has come. Something has to give with the team. It could be a trade. It could be a major trade. It could be a minor trade. Sometimes even – the smaller trades sometimes change your team considerably. But as long as we have a stubborn-ass coach who's unwilling to change, just resting on the, the future of this team is not DeMar DeRozan. I hate to say it. Let me, let me, let me break it to, the, to, to any fans or the NBA or anybody who thinks that, they, that it's still the future of the Chicago Bulls. There's no way you cut it. It's not DeMar DeRozan. So when you're not paying into your future, when you're not investing in your future by allowing these young players to develop some skills, you're failing the team and you're failing our future. Something has to change with this team. Let me know what you guys think on that one down below. All right, we're going to go ahead. We're going to get into the voicemails. It's Sunday, so even though it's game day, game day, it still means we got to get into the voicemails. This first one, this one's from Alvin. Hey, hey, this is Alvin. Uh, I'm probably going to make two messages. I don't know. Because I'm, I'm really upset right now because it's, my first thing is, why do the Bulls think it's cool for them to be down double-digit points and then try to fight their way back? I mean, I I don't understand why they got to the habit of doing that. And then when they uh, get close to taking the lead or whatever, they end up doing uh, taking ill-advised shots and making wrong plays to making turnovers and then they don't have any more energy to make that final push to get the lead and keep the lead I, I i just i just don't get that now i understand that they haven't done it in the past week week and a half but it's been an ongoing trend and i don't like that second thing i have a problem with is I, i'm kind of like pat when they were asking like why why billy hate Marco Samovich so much. I'm, I'm about to have that same question with Patrick Williams because it's like, okay, he's a good defender, uh, statistically probably the best defender we have on the team. But when it comes to plays, I mean, yeah, he has to insert himself. I mean, I, I, I'm not uh, disagreeing on that. But at the same time, you know, the team plays better in a couple of games when they did make plays go through him. And look at last night with the Knicks. He started off scorching the Knicks, and then after that, it's like Bill Donovan said, "Oh, okay, you you made you made two mistakes. All, all right, we we we'll go back to Demar and you know let Zach and uh, Vooch try to find their way through. Why can't you just why can't he just let the game flow through Patrick Williams the same way he would let the game through flow through Demar when he's hot, Zach when he's hot, sometimes Vooch when he's hot because he's still doesn't uh, even play Vooch uh, uh, as he's supposed to be. But that, that's all I got to say for this message. Uh, go Red, see Bulls, and I don't know. I'm, I'm about to see Red in a negative way. All right, peace. All right, so Alvin, first point. The Bulls having to fight themselves back from double-digit deficits it has killed this team. That's why I say the brand of defense, if we, can, if we can establish a brand of defense that we play for four quarters, Right. I'm not expecting us in the second half of, of games. We are the number two defense in the NBA. I'm not expecting us to be the number two defense throughout. I would love it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting us to be the number two defense. But guess what? We can be out of the bottom. We are like almost dead last in the NBA as far as the first quarter defense. Let's even it out. Can we even it out and become around the 10th defense throughout the whole game? Can we do that? The, the 12th? Can we do that if these Bulls can not avoid getting to these deficits? And some of that comes through scoring droughts as well. We need to find a way that when we are going through a scoring drought, that we can focus on going inside, right? Getting to the free throw line, getting to Vooch down low, getting out in transition to get easy buckets or fouls. Some of those things need to happen, and I think if that does happen, it can stop it. A lot of You can tell the Bulls run out of gas in certain games because they do have to come back from deficits so early on. And then on the flip side of that, even when they do get out to leads, they rarely hold on to those leads, right? They rarely hold on to the big leads that they get. There have been games where the Bulls have had eight, six-point leads in the first quarter, but by the second quarter, they're back being at a deficit. 
If they can eliminate that, I do think that things start looking different for the Chicago Bulls. Now, the second part of your voicemail that you said, why doesn't Billy Donovan use Patrick Williams more in the offense? Bro, I don't know. I've said this before. This is kind of my new thing that I'm sticking to is that we have a young forward that has shown the ability to have some point forward and playmaking ability, and we don't freaking use it. That has to change for the Chicago Bulls team because, again, you have to invest in that future. If you don't cultivate that future, then it's all like, again, we're going to be much like we were with, with Bobby Porters, with Laurie Markin, and with all these, and even to a greater extent because at least Laurie and Bobby got shots. Wendell got opportunities and got shots. Patrick Williams has never gotten the shots in the, in the offense and stuff ran for him that normal fourth overall picks get. And as many Bulls fans are saying, hey, let's shit P. Will. He's a bust. He's this and that. I guarantee you. For example, I'm going to use Pop. If, 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 if Patrick Williams was playing for Pop or Eric Spolstra or I don't know what else coach off the top of my head to mention, if he was playing for one of those coaches, Patrick Williams would easily be, easily be a 12, 6, and 4 guy at the bare minimum at this point in his NBA career. You need to cultivate that. You need to grow. You need to let that part of his game grow a little bit more. And hopefully we eventually see that for him and the Chicago Bulls. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This last voicemail, we have a text after this one, but this last voicemail, this one's from the 669. All right, man, I'm going to leave a voicemail because I ain't even sure if I'm about to make it into this hotline. But, oh, my God, the Chicago Bulls are the most frustrating and disappointing team in the NBA, and it's official. Um, I'm just going to start by opening with this, and a lot of people might disagree. DeMar and Zach cannot coexist together. Even last year, it's a pattern of one of them going off and the other one having a, a backseat game. We can't have that. They're not the Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. No one expected them to be that. But we expected them to at least be able to coexist in a, in a similar fashion of Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garden. We, we expected these people to be able to play together and both be able to score efficiently at a high rate, but it's not possible. And the reason being is because there's two types of scorers in the NBA, and we're looking at them, and those are the best examples. DeMar DeRozan, someone who – goes into a game saying, I'm going to score 25-plus and how I'm going to score, and he looks at the defenders and who he's going to target, and then someone like Zach, a young athletic player who goes off the of instinct and reaction. And if you look at our entire team, if we're being completely honest, everyone aside from maybe Patrick Williams does that, and in my opinion, Patrick Williams is doing that as of a lot lately. He's been moving off of instinct and reaction. He catches the ball and he immediately jabs, dribbles, jumps out off the dribble. He does something when he gets the ball. DeMar takes his time, and that's cool, but that's cool for crunch time when we're not down a million points. We don't need that during the entire game. What we need is for our entire offense to resemble what Zach and the other guys have going is that quick reaction, just move, move, move. Zach is a great player who could average, in my opinion, 30 points per game, but if he doesn't need to do it, he won't. I, I'm tired of people saying, Zach has bad games, which he has horrible games. Zach shit fucking stinks. But I'm tired of people saying games where he plays good defensively has a good re has a good amount of rebounds, good amount of assists. He he didn't play good because he only has 18 to 24 points. No, he didn't play bad. He played to his to, to the shots that are open. Now Zach takes a lot of contested shots, but like I said, he just plays based off the reaction, and that could be good and bad. I mean, in a perfect world, I would love Zach and the whole cast was a mix of playing with patience and reaction to know when to turn that reaction on and when to turn that. Okay, let me control the offense. Huh? But he can't. DeMar, he definitely fucking can. He moves like a fucking turtle and he's slow as hell. And he doesn't play no defense. E. Marty Rosen doesn't play any defense whatsoever. All he does is puff it, puff it, puff it, puff it, puff it. Are you going to hit your elbow on me? You're not? Ah, I'm going to still throw it. I'm going to still throw it. Oh, I missed. Ah, it's okay. I'm not going to even try. He doesn't even follow his shot. I've never seen DeMar get an offensive rebound over his jump shot. Maybe, like, if he misses a layup up close, but I've never seen him shoot a jump shot. And I, I can't fathom. All right. A lot to unpack here. The Bulls are the most frustrating team in the NBA. Yes, absolutely. Because I'm a Bulls fan. So I wouldn't be as frustrated by any other team because I don't really care as much about any other team uh, as much as I do the Bulls. So definitely they're the most frustrating team in the NBA. And they've earned that title. Zach and DeMar not being able to play together. Now, I fall back on this. There was a part at the start of last season where they were the highest scoring duo in the NBA. I do think that they can play together. I don't think that Billy Donovan runs an offense that allows that to happen. When you play strictly through DeMar, it kind of limits Zach. I do think that Lonzo did help that a lot, right? Now, 
I would say this, Billy Donovan also did not even use Lonzo as a half court, a half court point guard as much as I would have liked to see. But I do think that if Billy Donovan ever realizes, let's stop running everything through DeMar, let's get a playmaking point guard that we can trust. You have one in Lonzo whenever he does come back. But until then, you have to try to do some other things that we could see them play better together. But I will say this as well. Every single game that goes by, the likelihood of this duo being broken. And like I said before, regardless of how you want to see it, if you are a DeMar fan or not, this call is, is, clearly isn't, and that's fair. The future of the Chicago Bulls is not DeMar DeRozan. It's just not DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan is a Band-Aid for you right now. He, get, he wins you some games. He looks all good. He sucks defensively. Emar Rosen is terrible defensively, but he does enough offensively and in late quarters and in, in crunch time that it kind of covers all that up. It, it's, it's lipstick on a pig, so to say. But we need to see better from this team. And to do that, I do think that that involves not playing through DeMar DeRozan. Now, the Zach and DeMar playing together thing, again, like I said, I do think that, that there's a world in which that happens. I just don't know if we have the coaching staff. The last point, I love the last point of his text, is the Bulls playing with more instinct. More read, read and react type offense, right? To put it in a basketball term. I love that point because that is true as fuck. This period. Again, I'm cursing back on this. I'm, frust I'm frustrated Bulls fan, so I'm back to cursing. Um, but I, I completely agree with you there. I completely 100% agree with you. They need to get back to playing with instinct. It, it's not instinct out there. It's, when you see players play with, like Io. When Io started coming off the bench, he was just pushing the pace. He was playing off instinct. He wasn't always still hitting the shots at the rate that we wanted to see, but he was affecting the offense in other ways by pushing that pace. That is Io's natural instinct. When Io's in the starting lineup, you can tell he's not allowed to play that way because of the way that the Bulls team plays. We need to get back. More read and react style offense, not this heavy isolation thing. If we can get away with that, I think it, uh, get away from that, I think it's going to help this Bulls team tremendously as well. Thank you for leaving that. I didn't get your name on the voicemail, but it's from the 669. Last one, we got a text message from the 312, and he says this. Billy Donovan was the victim of the greatest shot in NBA history, Dame Lillard on Paul George. As a coach, do you, uh, do you recover from that? It doesn't appear he has. I think that's one of those things that as sports fans, we try to add these storylines to things. Listen, if he's still thinking about that shot from that many years ago, he needs to get fired, period. I don't think that it's that it's he's, he's recovering from a missed shot. Believe me, Billy Donovan's been a coach between college and now. For, for He's gotten big shots hit on him before on his teams. That's not something that, I, that I'm, not, I'm not giving him no bell for him getting a big shot hit on him. He's not, he, doesn't get, he doesn't get no bell thrown towards him for that. If that shit is affecting his mindset that much as a coach in the NBA, then you, you in the wrong job, player. Just like with, 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 uh, uh, with players. We expect players when they have cold shooting nights to kind of shake it off, go into the next game not thinking about it. You need to expect that plus more from your NBA head coach. And if he's still thinking about that shot from Dame Lillard, Hey, man, you in the wrong profession. That's my thought on it. You guys can let me know what you think down below. But that is it for today's episode of Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and or voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in everything on, go Bulls, see red. Love you guys, man. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media. Media.